This is the GB Interceptor. This is an open source and open hardware Game Boy adapter that uses the Raspberry Pi 2040 chip. Now to make this we've teamed up with our first sponsor to the channel, JLC PCB. Now I'd also love to give a massive shout out to Stax over on GitHub. It's his sheer genius that's made this whole thing possible. I'm going to throw all the links and everything down below to all the bits that you need to JLC PCB as well as Stax. But let's have a wee look at our sponsor, JLC PCB. So first thing I want to say a massive thank you to JLC PCB for trusting us in sponsoring this video. Now JLC PCB is a well-known manufacturer of printed circuit boards, also known as PCBs, you know, and they're very popular providing high quality and low cost PCB prototyping as well as different production services. JLC PCB has been used by hobbyists and engineers and different companies through all over the world because of their competitive pricing, fast turnaround times and ability to order both small and large quantities, which you'll see later on in this video. Their main services include the PCB fabrication, so single layer, double layer, multi layer PCBs, all that good stuff. SMT assembly, which is surface mount technology assembly, where components are soldered into the board. Custom PCBs, like this one in the video. And there's a super fast turnaround. Now, I think it maybe took us a week to get the board sent to us, which is absolutely amazing. Their interface is super easy, you just upload the Gerber file and it's pretty much good to go. Go through all the settings, review the board specifications, go through your tracking, all that good stuff. And their service is super, super low cost. So again, I just want to thank JLC PCB for making this video possible and I would recommend them as a go-to solution for all your hardware needs. Now, let's look into ordering and putting this thing together. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is go over to Stax's GitHub and pull off the Gerber files. Now I'm going to kind of zip through the settings here because honestly I'm going to throw the link down below to his build guide video. I suggest you go and check that out because it goes into a lot more depth and he's a lot more knowledgeable about this than I am. So this is just a, just a kind of brief um, overview for me. This is just to kind of show how simple it is going to be to order for GLC. Now the main thing is when you're going through this you want to pick the colour of your PCB. Now I opted for purple, there are different colours, you can go with the standard green, there's blue and there's yellow. I would say just check the price and do the side as you go because sometimes if it's a, a different colour, the lead time can be longer, like if it was yellow it was going to take longer for some reason, um, but I opted for purple because it was the same price and it was just as quick. So for here as well, PCB assembly quality, so we're printing, we're getting five boards but we're only getting two printed, which is fine because we only need the two, one for myself and one for Jimbo. And again, once all this is done, we'll click next and that'll give you a kind of brief overview of how the board is going to look. Then you have to upload the billing materials and then the position file. So all these are found over on Stax's GitHub. Once all that's uploaded, you'll get this cool 3D model showing you roughly where everything's going to be. And then for there, you just want to click through and then for there, you'll kind of see everything. And then for there, we get a kind of rough idea, final pricing, final build. And then, one week later, you'll get this amazing package through the door. Now, I am absolutely stoked that this came. I am so, so excited. It's packaged so well in a sturdy wee box and the amount of bubble wrap in it. Man, this was so well protected. I am so happy. And again, this took maybe a week to come. All in all, absolutely fantastic. All the bubble wrap, all this free amazing cool bubble wrap. Now, it's so like I said, we ordered five boards, but only two have been assembled completely because that's all we're really after. Um, you'll see here they've got the edge and everything around. These are just the spare boards. These are the fully assembled boards up close. Now, this is absolutely stunning. So, let's get into assembling it. Now, I ordered Game Boy connectors for AliExpress, but they were taking forever to come, and I have loads of these spare DS boards lying about. So I thought, you know what, let's cannibalize one of these and let's pull the connector off of the DS. Now, the first thing I'd done was remove the DS card just because it was in the way, and I took my heat gun, loads of flux, and took it to the pins, and then with a wee bit of patience, a wee bit of time, <laughs> patience, um, it, eventually, it eventually worked its way loose. So now that it's worked its way loose, we're going to have to modify this a wee bit because it's no designed to fit Game Boy games as it is because it was only meant for Game Boy Advance games. So we have to trim off the edge and as you can see now, it fits absolutely perfectly. So we have to clean up the pins a wee bit, just get any excess uh, solder or any wee bits off just because they want the pins nice and clean for going onto the GB Interceptor board. That beautiful board, the best board that we got for JLC 
PCB. So now that's as clean as we're going to get if we're going to prep the GB interceptor board for this to get installed onto. Now if they break away these wee tabs, so there's one on the left, one on the right, and then this is an extension board, so I think this is if you want to install it outside of the Game Boy or whatever it was, um, but we didn't need that, so we're going to install the connector just now. What I'd done was applied loads of flux to the pins, and then I tacked on one side and then tacked on the other side. Now, somehow, in my infinite wisdom, I still managed to get a squint. So, once it's kind of all tacked on, it was all connected, all the points had connection, which is all you really need. Everything was strong, everything was sturdy. Again, I don't know what I'd done, but it was all squint. It still worked, but it was squint. So one thing I liked about this is the fact it's going to work with the Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, as well as the DMG. And I'm also going to try my Game Boy HD console that I made a few months ago. Now I'm trying here with the DMG. I 3D printed the case here. Again, all these links are over on Stax's GitHub. Check the links, you're going to have an absolute blast. And as you can see here, it is a bit squint. But look, it works. I'm not bored. I am bothered, but I'm not going to fix it. Because I know if I try and fix it, I'm just going to make it worse. But anyway. We're going to slide this into the DMG. Now you might be asking, what is this fancy ass DMG we've got here? This is one that I modified a few years ago. Me and James had a wee competition to see who could uh, make the best one and uh, guess who won that one. But plugged it in here, we've connected to USB-C and the capture software basically just recognizes the GB interceptor as a webcam. So everything is super crisp, super clear. One thing as well is there's absolutely zero lag on this thing. Everything is running super smoothly and I'm actually finding the image probably one of the cleanest that I've ever had and that's including the uh, the SNES Game Boy Player as well as the um, the GameCube GameCube Player? Game Boy Advance Player, whatever it's called. And here I am decorating the camera because obviously this had to be done. This is one of the, the coolest peripherals, I think, on the, the Game Boy, and I wanted to see how well it would work with this. And, and as you can see, it works absolutely fantastically. So I'm going to mess around with this a wee bit, and we're going to try out a few more games. The original Game Boy might be one of the most important handhelds that ever existed. For a lot of people, this was their opportunity to play some of their most favourite franchises that they probably still play today. I know that for myself and Graham, this had a real integral part in our gaming during our youth. And there's a good chance if you grew up in the early 90s to early thousands that it was part of your gaming youth as well. Starting off with the original DMG which stood for Dot Matrix Game, all the way up to the Game Boy Advance and the multicoloured systems that followed. This system was a bunch of fun and the amount of games that you got for it was insane. You had all the games that you could possibly want to play on it. From the pack-in title that was Tetris which is just an amazing puzzle game. There were also so many iconic titles on the Game Boy DMG as well. Don't forget you had Super Mario Land, you had Kirby's Dream Land, you had Wario Land, you had The Legend of Zelda which was an amazing game and then on top of that probably one of the most important games which was Pokemon. No matter what game you enjoy playing on your Game Boy though, you can guarantee you could find a million other games. I still at this point don't think that I've covered every single Game Boy game that is on the system. I can definitely tell you something though, I still enjoy going back and playing this thing to this day. Me and Graham love this system so much that we even got tattoos of the original DMG Game Boy because we are that passionate about this little console. It is fantastic. There were other handhelds that came out during this time, but there was a reason why the Game Boy was so important. The battery life was incredible. You could get easily up to 30 hours out of just four double A's. Now, back in the day, this was a big deal because your parents weren't fond of buying batteries all of the time. Over its entire life cycle, this little handheld sold over 118.69 million units worldwide. 
It's not really too surprising as well with that sort of number because this system released in 1989 and didn't get discontinued until 2003. That was only 21 years ago. As of the time of the recording, this actual system is the fourth best-selling game console of all time. And I would even say in this day and age, it'd be worth going back and checking out the Game Boy because there are still so many fun games to be played on it. So this is probably one of the coolest things. You can't really see what's going on. And it looks kind of dark, but it's very bright outside. As you can see. Well, do you think I should start using this as my new webcam? This is pretty cool. Well, I'm going to leave you here for this video. I've uh, had a great time installing this uh, GB Interceptor. And please visit the sponsor, JLC PCB. I'll throw a link and everything down below. I'm having an absolute blast with this. And I'm going to try some more games. So please think about liking, subscribing, commenting. All that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.